Welcome back, everybody, to the Backyard Pitmaster Podcast. My name is Charlie Maverick, and I am excited to have this show. It is a Thanksgiving themed show, and with me today are two gentlemen that are going to give you a lot of information, and we're going to try to entertain you and prepare you for your Thanksgiving cook. First, I would like to welcome to the show, show regular, Terrence P. Elmore. How you doing, brother? Doing good, doing good, man. How about y'all? Ah, doing great, doing great. And we got second time guest, and he is a YouTube sensation, even though he's going to be modest and say he's not. We got the dudes from Outdoors with Jeff himself, Jeffrey Boyd. How you been, brother? Hey, what's going on, Charlie? How you doing? What's going on, Terrence? Hey, what's happening? So, you know, I'm glad to have you guys here. We're here to talk about all things live fire and this big turkey day that's coming up. So first, I, I want to ask you guys what y'all guys been up to since the last time we talked. Terrence, first, uh, I know you were on the most recent Backyard Pitmaster podcast. What you been up to since we uh, we last recorded? Um, currently working on that next uh, podcast episode. Um, you know, I like to do a blog first, so yeah. I'm working on that blog, and I'm trying to get all that done before the weekend. Um. I'll keep you posted on that. Seems like we always have this conversation where I'm in the process of, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll keep you posted. But um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, trying to look at some more things with my um blog and some merch with my book. Um, oh yeah, it was two years since I published my book. It only feels like one because of uh COVID. Yeah, but yeah. it's been two years since I published my second book, so I've been trying to do some yeah. type of awareness to that on social media and stuff. And um, well, yeah. go ahead and plug your where, where they can find your stuff real quick. Yeah, um, the Brown Sugar Cafe that's uh, on Instagram and also Facebook, and my blog page is uh, the Brown Sugar Cafe dot blog, and my podcast is uh, the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast. It's available on all platforms. Amen. And then, Jeffrey, you've been up to a lot of stuff, you know, since we last talked. So it was a little over a month, I believe it was. What you been up to since we last talked? Oh, man, just getting out some content, um, getting some good cooks going, and uh, just focusing in on the holiday season. I uh, have a merchandise uh, line that's going to be coming out here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, got some shirts and hats and hoodies and things of that nature uh get that out there and get that out selling selling some of that stuff but basically just been focusing on trying to get some good cooks going and getting some great videos out there i want to give a hand clap for both of y'all because y'all doing dope stuff can your brand go into the moving yeah you know? thanks that's that's really good um i know this year has been a, a transition to try to move out of the hell that we were in in 2020 <laughs> we're trying to forget about it <clears throat> um so how's the year been going for everybody we're almost at the conclusion of this year it seems like it went by real fast but like um has this year treated you better than 2020 i think it has um just you know as you were asking that question i was thinking about it and it has. Um, we've been able to kind of get out a little more. Still not wide open like we used to be, but right. Um, just feeling more comfortable. Just in in general. Um, seems like things are slowly kind of getting to a uh, normal pace. Um, of course, it'll never be like it used to be, but um, overall, the the year has been pretty good. Some pretty good things are happening and have been happening. Um, so I can say compared to the previous year, just the previous year just seems like a blur. I just, just so, I have, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I have like a hard time trying to grasp. Like, I'm like, so when was this? And I was like, that was two years ago. It only feels like a year ago with a lot of things. It feels but, like that Marvel blip, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird. But overall, the year has been pretty good, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to closing it out strong. All right. How about you, Jeff? Yeah, it's definitely been better than last year um, from a standpoint of folks understanding what's going on mm -hmm. and people choosing to react to it or not react to it. 
you know, but I know what works best for me from that standpoint. So I went on ahead <laughs> and got vaccinated. And yeah. uh, you know, it's it's definitely a it's definitely a change from, you know, you know, a few years ago. But in that standpoint, I think it really opened eye, people's eyes to what can happen. If we're really yeah. sitting here where, you know, we we've, we've lost a lot of people. Right. I've I've mm-hmm. never heard so many people talk about, you know, funerals and sudden funerals, you know, like they did last year and, you know, mm-hmm. part of this year. So, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just blessed. I'm happy to be around and mm-hmm. you know, looking forward to the next year as well. Yeah, I know last year was really hard for me. I went through mental health transition. Didn't think I was going to get out of that, but you know, support system and you know, just have the the right um, atmosphere to facilitate uh, good mental health to pull you out. And this year is I, I ain't looking back. You know, I learned a lot of lessons over this pandemic that <laughs> I will not regress. And uh, yeah, I'm vaccinated too. Um, you know, you reminded me, Jeff, when you said <laughs> about the vaccine because I was I was watching a um, Michael Shea stand up yesterday, <laughs> and he uh, he had all the people in his crowd vaccinated, but you know he he said something very interesting that made me laugh really hard. <laughs> so he was like, "Yeah, you know, got the vaccine and everything, uh, that's all good." But you know, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how this vaccine is really like the quality of it, because you know the government don't like to give away free shit. You know, when they give away free shit, sometimes it's not the best quality. You know, like government cheese. <laughs> he want that he want that vaccine that rihanna got you know what i'm saying that that five thousand dollar vaccine <laughs> money for that thing oh man I, I, I started thinking i'm like you know every time i got some free stuff from the government i was like y'all can have this back <laughs> well i feel you <laughs> i feel you Puts things in perspective, but as long as we stay safe out there and you know do what we got to do, um, we got to take it a day at a time. That's all I've. That's the main thing I've learned. You got it. I, I I was also listening to this uh, Will Smith interview with Oprah, and he said really something profound that his dad taught him when his when he was little, and his dad was uh, working on uh, masonry, and he was he was having him and his brother. Oh, this, yeah. this uh this wall this brick wall and he was getting real frustrated getting real frustrated and his dad was like all you gotta do is focus on that one brick and when you're done with that one brick you focus on the next brick you don't focus on the completion of the wall you focus one brick at a time i'm like man we got to take it one day at a time or like vin diesel says <laughs> We live life one quarter mile at a time. How love you will say? <laughs> Two different ways. Yeah. <laughs> Same point. But, you know, I'm glad everybody's doing good. There's a lot of death going on. There's some people still, you know, be safe. You know, it's it's not going to go away for a while. But um, exactly. You know. Exactly. And I think I think folks kind of need to realize that we, you know, we kind of went into. The, the country kind of went into this thing thinking that, hey, 4th of July, we're going to be done and this and that. It's like, <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. It is not going to, it's not going to happen that way. And sure enough, you know, we're still, we're still, you know, we're going to see a couple more variants out here, but. Mm-hmm. And then I, I was just thinking about like, they, the main thing with like how they just jumped the gun with stuff being open or whatever is like they weren't going to shut down the country two summers in a row. No, that was never going to happen. Because that's a lot of money that was lost. Oh, yeah, like man. different things being open, different theme parks, games, concerts, different things like that. Getting money circulating to get the economy going. Like a lot of that was on just standstill. So it was like, hey, bump it. Hey, I'll just, <laughs> you know, hey, 4th of July, yeah. whatever, just do what you do. You know what they really didn't want? They didn't want any more protests. So it was like, let everybody out the house. <laughs> <laughs> whatever happens, nobody be glued to the TV and pay attention for it, and it'll be a trending topic, you know? It's like, let them yeah. out. 
you know, some people gonna die, you know, because they ain't seen the light in a long time. But you know, you gotta go through that. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Like some people, like all the crazy stuff you see happening and different things. Like some people are so stuck in the house, they got out and they just lost their mind. Mm-hmm. Hell, yeah. I mean, just doing wild stuff. Just, just excited to be outside. <laughs> It's yeah. just like, don't you want to make it back outside again the next day? Like, come on, man. The thing is, they could have still went outside. They All they had yeah. to do is just keep their distance and be safe. I think we like to overcorrect a lot. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't make any logical sense to do so, but it's human nature just to, just to just act at, at an extreme spectrum of something every time. Something comes out. We we don't have any, we don't understand nuance a lot. You know what I mean? Um, and try to understand like, okay, you can do this. You gotta be safe though. So they're like, oh, we're gonna shut down. We're gonna stay inside. Like I was still at Walmart, and I still go to Walmart. You know, everybody at Walmart know my name. I just wear a mask. They know me because of my mask, not my name. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> But yeah, you got a point. The the economy took a big hit. There's a lot of. I told you this before. Um, I was trying to get this catering business going, and good yeah. lord, I'm glad I. I kind of glad I didn't, cause um, cause if I would have had like a brick and mortar, or a food truck, I would have suffered. It was it was really bad. Like food trucks were trying to get assignments from neighborhoods to just post up and um, and and hopefully people would come up, but they were too scared. You know, <laughs> it was just yeah. one thing. It's one of them things, man. And I can imagine where you live. Yeah, the, even the competition for like a food truck and then having to compete with people who are established and somebody they could kind of feel comfortable with. Like, okay, yeah. And like, who's this guy? I mean, <laughs> his food smells good, man, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to risk. Because <laughs> some people risk, you know, whatever for some food if they know it's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now if you the new guy on the block, they like I, I don't know. It smells good. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever had it before? No. Yeah, brother, we just gonna leave you right there. Um, <laughs> I don't blame him. You know, right? <laughs> but at least it gives you opportunity to kind of look at things, and you might have, you know, probably. I'm pretty sure you were thinking over the process of like what you could have done differently. And what you yeah. can do, it gives you more time to think. I think a lot of things happen, mm-hmm. like especially the pandemic, it happened like for a reason. Mm-hmm. And it it helped some of us pause and like look at things differently and reevaluate, you know, our day to day lives, our things we had important, things that we thought were important. And we realized that they weren't like plans we had. We actually had to pause some of those plans to actually think oh, yeah. about the plans. And restructure them, and then, you know, like you say, man, you're always good at reinventing yourself. So this was an opportunity to just reinvent that. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I I think a lot of people had to reinvent themselves with working oh, on yeah. wood or the things in the the way that they just structure their day. Yeah, I kind of, I mean, there's some good things that came out of the pandemic. It wasn't all for bad. sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And I, I totally agree with you on that because um. I was listening to uh, to NPR the other day, and they were t- they were talking to I can't remember what university they were at, but they said um, but they said if if the pandemic happened in in the early '80s, early '90s, you know, people wouldn't be able to work from home. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you you'd still have folks trying to get into work and things of that nature, and mm-hmm. the issues that would come with that, and you know, you probably have more deaths and things of that nature. <clears throat> but the technology is what kind of help get us through this get us through this side of it you know yeah absolutely. and i also think even even from a business perspective man i mean you know I, I remember i was uh i was talking with jess about this the other day i think i was i think it was maybe i want to say maybe around 97 98 something like that when i first remember fast food places taking credit and debit cards oh yeah yeah <laughs> And, and and you think, yeah, and you think about that, and you think about the convenience and things of that nature, and mm-hmm. now you look at 
every if 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 somebody doesn't offer delivery on something then they're, they're just not in the game you know be it a grocery store you know they, yeah. they, i mean everybody everybody found a way to hook up with instacart or doordash or whatever the case may be that's right yep. and you know and 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 it's helped them and it's changed the game when it comes when it comes to those type of services now you know, I, I literally now just, you know, when it comes to the grocery store, I don't I don't go anymore. I just go ahead and go on the Publix app, whatever, and just get what I need to get. And, you know, it's usually <laughs> here within 45 minutes, you know. My wife is literally doing that as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Getting ready for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. I, I The only reason I go to the store is I, I had a bad experience. I don't know if you guys had this, but ordering through the apps and getting cuts of meat. You know, they don't pay attention to certain things that we would. So yeah, I had see. a couple of sub I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. And, this and is I, why. I, still, I still go for that. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I've never used um, any type of delivery thing with food. Because I remember one time I was in the neighborhood market, Walmart. And I saw this girl. She was loading up the cart and she was picking up produce. She just was grabbing the first thing that she saw and putting it in the cart. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, you know, cause I'm particular about stuff. So when I go to a store, I'm not just going to grab the first thing, uh, depending on what it is, I'll, I'll say, but like, if you're looking for something like meat, like you say, or right. produce, you're going to look for the best one that's there and things that expire. They might just grab what's, uh, you know, what's first on the shelf. But That's sometimes true. people, even though they're supposed to move like the older stuff forward, people like me mm-hmm. still go to the back and get the <laughs> the one that expires yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then some people push the other stuff back or they whoever's supposed to move the stuff don't. And so if you're in a rush and you're trying to fill all these orders, then you're probably just going to grab whatever. Or if it's a young person who's never been taught how to shop. Because a lot of my learning, even though I went to the store and stuff with my um my mom's growing up, because um I never really paid attention. It wasn't until I went to college, and especially when I moved off campus, when I started paying attention to labels and expiration dates and different things like that. Mm-hmm. And they, some people don't, you know, I mean, it was never a thing to me or anything that I thought I had to know because I wasn't buying anything you know more like juice you know junk food stuff like that but when i started getting into like actual like rice and different yeah. things like that just certain things you have to pay attention to it they don't teach home ec in school anymore sure and some of the parents it. yeah some of the parents don't know because they weren't taught so i for me i don't want to run the risk of because i'm serious about food okay and i don't want to run the risk of <laughs> stuff coming here because i'm gonna go to the store and we're gonna have a problem <laughs> be you some know, furniture moving. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm be, I'm gonna handle it properly. You know, I'm not gonna you know show out in the store stuff, but you you're gonna remember me. It sounds like you're gonna show out in the store. Yeah, remember no. you, 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 you. See, my I have a calmness. <laughs> I have a calmness when I, you know, get into those uh, situations because I you know I respect customer service people and things like that, and um, you know, I understand how things happen, but. You're going to see me and you're going to understand like I'm a customer and I'm paying for this service. And I understand that times are hard right now and it's hard filling positions because some people have to come back to work and and some people are being just pushed into like, OK, this is your first day. No orientation. Just go out and, you know, hit the floor, do whatever. But at the same time, someone should be taking the time to make sure this stuff is being done right because I'm a customer. You know, Terrence, you reminded me of something and I got I was meaning to tell this story but it seems like the perfect time to tell the story and then we'll talk about the, the live fire stuff so this past weekend when it wasn't the grocery store delivery stuff it was from a Chinese restaurant and we order from the specific Chinese restaurant pretty often because we like Chinese food we black we like Chinese food whatever so um, we ordered the food. Like I already cooked something, but I we didn't feel like eating it. You, you ever had that situation where like, oh, I, I cooked the food and I'm like, I don't want to eat that till yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So we ordered the food. My wife got on the phone. She ordered. It wasn't through the app. She had to call and order. And the lady said, okay, you know, 45 minutes. It was a weekend. Fine. That's that's typical. Traffic, whatever. So 
An hour and a half later, she was like, hey, go ahead and call him. So I called him. I was like, hey, what's going on with the food? You know, I'm, I'm a nice guy, or I try to be. I'm like, hey, what's going on? The lady's like, oh, we're, we're down to one driver, blah, blah, blah. And um, she said something about some dude can't walk. I was like, I don't care what this, what? So I'm like, uh, so when the food going to be here? She was like, I think the guy left. I'm like, you think the guy left? What? All right. <laughs> So, all right. So April was on the phone still. And, you know, I was, I was like, I was getting impatient because I'm hungry now. So I get a little hangry. She gets on the phone about 10 minutes later and the lady gives her lip. And I'm like, hey, is, is, is she, is she like giving you like trouble? Like what was she saying? She's like, oh yeah. Uh, argue about some that still about the dude that can't walk for some reason. I don't, I, she was like, I don't care, you know. We order from all the time, like, tell us when the food's coming. And it was almost two hours at this point, so we know the wow. food's gonna be cold. So yeah. she was like, Okay, can we get a discount or whatever? He was like, Oh, yeah, well, we can give you uh, some free um, cheese crab wontons. I'm like, is it coming anyway? <laughs> you gonna keep that? Like, keep, like, like, we ain't trying to get food free, but you need to, like. We're regular customers. Come on now. So I got on the phone with my asshole self. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, at this point, at this point, I was seething because she she my April was doing the best she could to try to go back and forth, try to get this this guy. And this lady was like, okay, I'll take 10% off. And 10% mm. off was like only like four dollars. I'm like, what the really? Uh-uh. No, that that covers the tip I was gonna give that I ain't gonna give no more. So I got on the phone. And I just, <laughs> you know, I had to be extra. I'm like, I I can shut down all delivery services from this neighborhood. You know, you know, I, I had a lot. I had a more aggression in my voice than that. You know, I ain't trying to I ain't trying to scare people from listening to the show because I don't want to get the same voice now. But the, the the moral of the story is these people didn't give a shit about customer service. They was arguing with us about stuff that we paid for. I'm like, come on, man. Your job is to just fill the order and get the stuff here on time. So and I promise I'll send this clip to you if I can find it on the camera because I have a doorbell camera. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so the, the driver came to the door. The Asian man came to the door. It's usually a white man, but he was an Asian man this time. And he, <laughs> I was like, I got to let him have it. I got to let him have it. I was like, where were you, man? He was like, I was busy. I'm only driving. I was like, hey, hey. Next time we order, give us the right time. It's like that that ain't my problem. I just, like, oh, 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 oh. Like, look, you gotta get this shit right next time. Cause we order for all the time. We order from you all the time. I'm like, you better tell your boss what I'm saying. Like, I'm gonna call the place and I'm a I'ma check up on you to see if you told your boss. This, this dude just walked away throwing up his hands, like, help me, get me out of here. <laughs> Oh man! And y'all probably y'all probably were like the third or fourth people probably that day, and it it's just like whatever at that point. You know the bad part: the food wasn't even that good. That no, day. come always, on, the man. food was always on point. The food wasn't even that good. See, something else was going on in there. Maybe <laughs> the guy who leg hurt was the was the regular cook. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> You should have been listening. To, you should, maybe you should have been asking, like, "Hey, so this guy with the leg that hurts, like, who who is he in this operation?" Is he like, the, she was making it seem like it was the driver, so I didn't think anything of it. Maybe the maybe the the driver was the regular cook, and they got him driving, <laughs> making deliveries. Now, that's, now, because I went off on some random bed. in the kitchen trying to figure out how to put something exactly together. right. The cousin that can't cook, you know, oh, just know how to heat up food. <laughs> So now we can't order for a while because we like yeah. We order, please like, don't. Yeah, they might. <laughs> please don't. I know them stories about Chinese restaurants doing stuff to people. <laughs> I'm like I'm not, I'm not gonna be a statistic. <laughs> you get me, dog. <laughs> oh man. Oh gosh. <sighs> I feel better. I got that out. Thank you. <sighs> yes, but anyway. So, all right. So first up. What you guys been cooking since we last talked? I know Terrence, you were working on a whole chicken cook. So tell us a little bit about how that went. Yeah, I um decided to smoke a whole chicken. I I got like a small barrel grill, 
And so I wanted to see, well, my main thing I was trying to see if it would fit. So I did the um, what spatchcock butterfly, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just, you know, season it up a little. Uh, matter of fact, now I remember um, my wife saw a recipe on something, but they used some oil and they had a bunch of seasonings and they brushed it on the bird. They put theirs in the oven, though, but oh. I used that same technique and I, you know, brushed it on the bird or whatever, put it in the pan. And the, um, yeah, I smoked it. That was my first time, you know, smoking a whole chicken. And it, it turned out pretty good. Um, I did good. the. Yeah, thanks, man. I did the. Uh, I know you you downplayed the uh, the foil method with the chips, but <laughs> I did that right. But let yeah. me tell you. So you, I don't know why. I just I just kept thinking about that conversation we had about over smoking your meat, and I'm like, I started getting paranoid <laughs> on that second pack. So I just pulled it off, and I was just like, it's cool, it's cool, it's all right. So it didn't get like the smokiness that I wanted. But it was still there. It's all good. I mean, yeah, like I, like I told you, it's better to under smoke it than to over smoke it. Yeah, yeah. And I was scared <laughs> about that because I was like, yeah, it's smoking real good. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know. And, uh, so I just pulled it off and I just set it on the side. I let it finish out outside the grill. I was like, yeah, yeah. I think that's good enough. But. <laughs> I mean, I was paired. I don't know where that because normally, because you know, I told you I've never over smoked anything before. So I really, but I just well, had you paranoid. You, I don't know. You the I same guess method, right? No, I guess because I was trying like a whole different technique, oh, and so yeah. yeah, that just it. Yeah, but it turned out good though. That's all that matters. Yeah, it did. Uh, um, I was very yeah, I was very impressed. Um. That little method with the oil and the paprika and the whole different other spices and stuff, it locked in the flavor. It was nice and juicy. The skin was crisp. So, um, Ooh, how'd you get the skin crisp? Psh, just the oil on there? I think it's just the oil and the seasonings. Hey, hey, and then when hey. I cut into it, it was juicy. And I, I, I smoked it in a pan and um, I put a little, little water in the pan and I had some onions in there too. Ooh. And, um, yeah, it turned out really good. That was my first time ever doing it like that. So I'm I'm looking forward to trying trying it again. Um maybe do some things a little different just to see, you know, what I can do with it. I'm surprised you didn't use a Trader Joe's seasoning. Or did you? <laughs> I did. Um, that, twi <laughs> that 21 seasoning, it was 20, one of the 21. yeah. <laughs> that was one of the seasonings I put in the oil. Um, I still added, uh, and I forgot to use oregano. We got like a brand new bottle of oregano, and I completely forgot that we had it. Did but you I miss used, it? Yeah, I I like oregano and everything, so I kind of yeah. Part of Italian, you little part. Of Italian. Eh, no, I, I used thyme, and I'm trying to think what else I used. Um, got a little bit of parsley in there too, but thyme, garlic. You know, I always use garlic. Hmm. Um no, I don't think I put any um I'm put like a light light a little coat of um Tony's. Tony Shasheries? Yeah, I mean just I like mean Tony Shasheries too, yeah, man. Yeah, just very Cajun seasoning? Yeah, just very light. Um because I like to do okay. more sort of herbs and try not to, you know, I I like the herbs to bring out the flavor in the meat, not yeah. so much as like the salt. So that's good. So you used um, hickory wood chips, right? Yeah, that's my first time using hickory in a long time. I've been on um, pecan for a while. I love and pecan. I, yeah, me too. And I don't know why I just decided to. I was like, man, let me let me see if I still like hickory like that. I think and I know um, why you use hickory. You might still be thinking about you know that Netflix special that they talked a lot about. The South Carolina barbecue scene and all that, the history of it, and high on the hog. If you, yeah, if if you from South Carolina, you should use hickory, 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 hickory. They, they kind of that's what it, in <laughs> it might have been. Yeah, I think so. Because I, I sure I bought a big bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe I'm dishonoring my heritage. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> I still haven't finished that bag yet. Yeah, I was looking at my bag like I, I, 
I don't know. I probably will get some pecan. <laughs> I mean, I like hickory. It just Me doesn't. Too. It doesn't give that kick of smoke like you like that little punch through like you want it. It. it I mean, it's good. It, it gives you that yeah. like little that, that slight fragrance. I, I don't know. It, I don't know. It's cool. Some, yeah, it's, I, I it's like cool. I like hickory. It gives you it gives you a really good um uh I I think like a a, a bite to it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. You guys say I'm crazy, but whenever I use post oak, it felt like things kind of got a little on the chewy side for whatever reason. I don't know, but it's something about the texture with using um hickory and maybe pecan and cherry. Cherries is fine with everything, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good cook, man. So, did you finish eating it already? Um, actually, no. There's some left that I'm gonna eat tonight, and that's gonna be it. Well, that's good because you made that uh only a few days ago. Yeah. Um. It's well. I'll say this. It's 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 pretty much done. Um. There's some, you know, some of those random pieces on the bone and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you better make some soup. Out, right? Yeah, that's right. That's, and that was the thing I was thinking about because, um, matter of fact, I have some soup that I froze that we got from my mom's. Um, mm-hmm. She did like three different soups. Ooh. And um, yeah, one had two of them had tofu, um, mm-hmm. and they were really good. Uh, one of them was like the tofu and um, spinach. And then another one was like a tofu and um, shells. It was supposed to be like chicken noodle soup because my pops oh, loves chicken noodle soup. I mean, when I tell you loves, like he, I didn't know Chick-fil-A sold chicken noodle soup until it he. It is good too. He, see, that's exactly what he said. He was like, hey, you go get me some soup from it. I was like, from Chick-fil-A? He was like, yeah. You ever had? I was like, no. He's like, it's really good. Yeah, I was like, I'll take your word for it. But um, it's good. Yeah, so I was going to take like the rest of the meat and then like cook the soup, the vegetable soup that we have left, and then throw some of it in there and do it like that. So we'll see. Hmm. It's going to yeah, we're going to finish it off tonight either way. So well, good, good, good. So next up, oh, we got yes, boy here. Yes. Oh, hey man, <laughs> you ready to take the stage? I, I mean, look. Look, the the amount of times where you emphasize how moist this turkey was. Right, I've been waiting on this. <laughs> I counted it. It could have been a drinking game. <laughs> so please, please, you have the floor. Tell us how the all the techniques and the progression went through of how you got this. We we will share the video link in the description. But please give give these people these people a taste. Not <laughs> well, man, I'm I'm a big um, proponent of when when it comes to Thanksgiving, I'm you you don't need to bring anything new to Thanksgiving. If it's never been tried, you you don't need to, you don't need to try it at Thanksgiving because it, it may not work, and then you're gonna get that look from Grandma, and it, it's just not gonna be good. So this this is a this is a recipe here that I've basically used um, for a few years now. And it's just brining a turkey. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm a huge believer in brining, just because of and I, I used to just inject, but what I found was that you know so many people put the emphasis on you need to thaw a turkey for four days and this and that. And my my point is, well, if you're already going through that process and you can take you know an extra day and brine it, and then you can take a day and dry it off and let it air dry in the refrigerator and get that skin nice and nice and tight so it'll be crispy for you but from that standpoint i just use the brine that i normally use it's um it's uh 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 now, now the name is slipping my mind it's uh by fire and flavor it's called turkey perfect and it's uh it's, this one is the herb uh, flavor that has uh you know the rosemary and thyme and all that stuff in it that came in a big and, bucket right like a huge yeah, I, yeah, I bought I bought that bucket. It's called it's called a, uh, the Briner, and it's actually oh. really good, man. I'm going to be using it for a lot of different things and some other cooks, but it has a it has a plastic plate in it that keeps that keeps your uh, food from floating. 
So it mm -hmm. keeps it fully submerged. You just push it all the way down so it stays in the brine. And that's usually what you see sometimes, you know, with the bags or whatever the case may be. Right. But um, from that standpoint, you know, it, it, cooking a turkey really isn't as hard as we like to make it seem. You know, everybody <laughs> just gets all this energy around it, you know. But I mean, if you if you cook a chicken, you can cook the turkey. You know, it's not, exactly, it's not yeah. that bad. And I think I think one of the things that really helped me in a sense is that, you know, I ate a lot of dry turkey when I was younger. You know, and, and everybody, I mean, it, it, and everybody just had this this notion of, um, you know, the turkey's going to be dry. That's it. You know, you you you're going to save it with some gravy, and mm -hmm. that's going to help you. And 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 that's not. It doesn't have to be that way. I'm a firm believer in um, in any whole bird that I make, I normally spatchcock it, uh, because right. you have everything laying flat and it's going to cook even, versus having you know a breast uh, up high. And the temperature being different, you know, than than your great temperature, it, it it throws everything off. So I'm a firm believer in spatchcocking, and I even take it a little bit further. Um, because when I spatchcock, I'll I'll do the extra effort and cut the wishbone out, mm -hmm. so you can go ahead and just cut the breast off, and then just take slices off, you know, the slice the whole breast up from that standpoint. That makes sense. Yeah, but um, you know. <clears throat> With, with the flavor that I have from the uh, from the brine, and then I also injected it with um, Butcher's Barbecue uh, Bird Boost. Now, if you've never if you never heard of Bird Booster, it's really good, it, it, and they have a lot of phosphates in there that mm -hmm. just adds moisture in and gives you gives you a good solid good solid cook and gets you some good flavor. The one I used was rotisserie, and I normally keep that in the original flavor inside the pantry, but just injected it and Season it with the SPG. I normally use a Fiesta Brands garlic pepper seasoning. Yeah, you love that one. Oh yeah, and I'm telling you, man. If you can, if you can get your hands on some of that, um, they sell it for uh, three ninety nine. I think it's three ninety nine a bottle at uh at um at Academy Sports. That's not bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. And it's it's just a really good overall blend, and it's got some parsley in it too, so it gives it a little extra kick. Oh. And um. Yeah, man. I mean, just you know, run it at three, uh, ran it at three hundred, and ran with some some post oak and cherry. And, and you cooked it on the char griller. Um, yeah, the, uh, the gravity. An eighty. Yeah. yeah. And just ran it uh, for the first hour, and I made a root roast with it too. Um, I'm not necessarily really big on vegetables you know I, i'll do you know different things you know brussels sprouts or things of that nature but that root roast is really simple just some sweet potatoes and rainbow onions and red uh i'm sorry rainbow carrots and red onions just cut it up and let the let the turkey cook for an hour and then put it on top of your vet put the turkey on top of your vegetables and go from there so you got all the juices but, flowing down yeah yeah and that's it, man. I mean, it, you know, you know, I basted it with butter after that first hour, and I didn't look at it until the temperature was uh sitting at about one sixty three, one sixty two, and that's when I pulled it off, and that was it, man. It looked delicious. It looked like something that you would you'd have like have a centerpiece at yeah. a, a very fancy Thanksgiving dinner, like a really fancy Thanksgiving dinner. I'm talking about you had to pay money to go. Yeah. You know that that presentation was was well. Well, let me let me tell you about the presentation thing, man. Because um, you know the, the company that I used to work for, that was a big thing. You know, with us was you know we used to have a seafood road show and things like that. Mm -hmm. And some years ago, we some you know we sit up there and we'd have like the salmon and the other stuff out there and whatnot. And we'd have to take you know kale and and uh. And you know, and fruit and things of that nature, and dress everything up, and mm -hmm. and you know, it, you know, we we're like, oh, it just looks nice or whatever. And then, you know, and talking with somebody, they're like, no, they actually sell some stuff. I was like, what do you mean? A couple weeks later, we got in some bullfrog legs. Bullfrog legs. Like, yeah, they're like, they're like, hey, put them, put them right there on that kale. It's that salmon, <laughs> dude. That stuff sold like crazy. I was like, man, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Telling you, man. Bullfrog legs. Yes. Yes, man. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, look, 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 literally just like somebody just cut a frog in half. Wow. His legs all stretched out and everything, man. People are buying it left and right. So, wow. 
That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, man. I love frog legs, you know, as long as it's not over salted. Man, bullfrog legs taste like chicken a little bit. Like gamey chicken a little bit. Hey, just put just put some orange slices and kale and cherries next to it. People buy it right up. Gordon Ramsay would be proud of you. The way that yeah. you you decorated. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, my, I was I was a little like drooling when I was watching, but you know, I caught it because I didn't want to. I didn't want my wife to judge me, so I caught it. Yeah. But man, that was some good stuff. So the the vegetables were very colorful, and it added yeah. like, how did you? And I, I I know you explained it in the video, but the potatoes, um, the 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 carrots, the it, is it because of the timing of when you put it on the grill that it yeah. didn't actually overcook? Yeah. Yeah, and that was just, that's just that's just perfecting it over the years. A couple of years ago, I, like I said, I did the same thing and cooked at the same time as a turkey, and I just felt like the vegetables were too soft. It almost came out like a um, almost came out like a pot roast vegetable. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I, I like I like my vegetables to have a little more bite, and then I just got to a point where I was just uh, not cooking it the first hour, letting the turkey cook, and then putting it on top, and it came out uh, it comes out perfect every time. It's good. You guys got to follow Jeffrey Boyd Outdoors with Jeff, G-E-O-F-F. And, I mean, follow this dude. How many followers do you have? Do, do you know how many people that subscribe so far? Um, I'm sitting at about uh, about 1,900 right now. Let's get those up. Let's get those up. Your production value is very good. The, the, the instruction that you give yeah. is, is, like, really in-depth. You can tell that you really, really like what you do, you know, and you're good at it. Some of these people, we talked about this in the pre-show. Some of these people, do, I mean, they, they, they have one or the other, but mostly not right. both. <laughs> but you, you have the total package. And you, you were saying earlier that you have some merch coming out. Um, are you going to sell that on the, um, like, if you subscribe to the Facebook, I mean, um, the YouTube channel? Uh yeah yeah I'm gonna gonna have some things coming through my link tree with some hats and t-shirts and uh and hoodies uh just getting just getting the brand out there more but um yeah that's gonna be coming here in the next uh next couple of weeks or so awesome awesome man y'all do some good stuff so I'll tell y'all guys real quick because we don't want to run long about the the pot roast that I did it it was very simple it was it was kind of like you know I just need to get some some beef in here because you know ribs are high <laughs> ribs are now i found a good cut of chuck roast it wasn't big i told you to we talked about this last time there's that i actually cooked it after we did the pod last time and i mean whatever it it was not a large cut of, of <laughs> it was not <laughs> i'm saying it was almost twenty dollars and i'm like where, where the rest of this meat at so i put it in a cast iron skillet put on the Weber kettle I was using the um, the smoke tube with uh, the, the pellets. I think it was hickory, oak, and cherry mix. The thing was, I didn't get a, I didn't taste a lot of smoke in it. Like I wanted, I, I really tried to get a lot of uh, smoke in it. And maybe, maybe I'm, I'm thinking that the wood pellets aren't always good to use with everything. Because maybe if I used the wood chunks, it would have got more smoke in it. Um, but it turned out well. Turned out really good. Uh, I smoked it uncovered for about two, three hours. And then I put the potatoes and the carrots in, some onions, some, a little bit of bell pepper in there, and you know, season it liberally. Uh, I was actually about to go watch uh, Finch, the movie with Tom Hanks. And I'm like, hey, uh, this is taking too long. Um, it's not tender yet. So I, I had to make one of those moves and put it in the oven because I was like, I don't want to use up coal. And it's not, I mean, there's no purpose of keeping putting more charcoal on here. It's not going to make a difference it's just for heat. Let me just put it in the oven. Uh, so I did that. Turned out really good. A little bit more smoke would have been preferable, but um, it, it, was, it, was, it was okay. It was okay. Um, we ate it all. Um, the, the potatoes came out 
pretty firm. It wasn't it wasn't mushy. Um, I think it, like you were saying, it's just because of timing, because I did pot roast a lot. Um, so it wasn't too mushy. It was kind of had a, like a nice bite to it, but it, it didn't like crumble in your hand and all that. The the carrots, I like my carrots mushy though. There's one thing about my carrots with pot roast. I, it, it has to almost be like, you know, one of those vegetables that they have in the Campbell soup thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, something me about carrots, it gotta be mushy. I don't, I don't know, but it, it did taste, it, it tastes all right. I would change it next time by using actual wood and not the wood chips. Now, now, Jeff, you used the the uh, a smoke, you used the wood pellets on something before, didn't you? And you liked the outcome of it. Was that right? Yeah, I've used. Uh, I I typically I'm. Over the years, I've used pellets and, and uh, wood chunks and chips. Um, right now, I, st- I typically stick with the chunks. And the one thing I will say is that in the in the char grill of 980, I'll throw some pellets in there in the, in the uh, ash pan. And you see, the thing I like about the pellets is you have a lot more blends that are out there where you right. can get some different flavors and things of that nature. Um Versus, you know, just sitting here and trying to take two woods and mix it together, whatever the case may be. But, yeah, I love getting some pellets in there for some smoke, man. Yeah, I did find that I can't over smoke with pellets. I just can't. I've, I've actually tried like a dummy. I tried. What? <laughs> I, I, I did, hey, look, I did. You know, and I did. So I, I got a little impatient. I'm like, eh, you know, I, this is before I got the smoke tube, which is kind of ask backers when i think about like why did i have the pellets about the smoke too anyway i threw it on the coals and you know gave a lot of smoke still didn't over smoke it even with salmon i was like all right that's cool then i was like let me get the smoke too and we talked about this terrence i I think you should try to get the smoke too man it gives you steady smoke you just gotta make sure that thing is lit enough to where it doesn't go out like 15 minutes later though (laughs) Yeah, I um I was looking at that too. Um, I, I I might I might dabble into that. Um, like I, I I'm kind of intrigued about this um this foil method after trying it for the first time. Yeah, I like how um yeah I kind of I kind of dig it. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, then the and the smoke tube would kind of do give you more. Yeah, it you would because it, it lets it breathe. Let's breathe and get. Because what I did, I just kind of folded it, and then I did like a loose fold over the top, so it kind of had like a gap. Um, I know some people poke holes in it or whatever, but I just kind of loosely folded it. Yeah, and you can get one of those smoke boxes if you wanted to do that too. I I haven't tried those, but I heard good things about them. It's always good to try. Oh yeah, they were they were great. They were great. Okay, yeah, I was wondering about those. Especially for like when I go to my folks' house and when I use my pops grill, he has a gas grill, and so yeah. it's perfect for like, that. Yeah, I was like, I wonder how, how good these smoke boxes really work because I don't know anybody who's ever used one. So there's this guy. Um, I don't know his name. He's a famous Creole chef from um, Louisiana, of course. Duh. And he's on Barbecue Guys on their um, on their YouTube channel. And he did like maybe three or four videos for them this year or th- th- in October, I actually think, back to back. And one of them, he was using the smoke box on a um, on a uh, propane grill. OK. And yeah, it, it works. Works great. He lives and dies by it, apparently. <laughs> so, wow. OK. Yeah. yeah. Try it out, man. Let's let me know. Um, yeah, I, I think I might try to see if. My mom would like uh, one of those because she wants to smoke meat, but she doesn't like to deal with charcoal. You know, yeah. you know, you know, it's, it's a little work. It's a little work. You know, people don't have time for that like we do. <laughs> so that that gives you the opportunity to get some smoke in there, turn your gas grill into a smoker. You know, any little bit helps. I, th- I don't know if you can over smoke with it. So, what was that? It, I was going to say, if you can find one, get get one that's cast iron. I've seen right. it before with the uh, where some of them are uh, out of steel or aluminum or whatever. Get one that's cast iron that'll hold that heat 
that'll keep mm-hmm. that temperature because that that temperature on that thing will run a lot hotter than what your grill is, and that's what's going to get that's what's going to get you some good clean smoke is having that that heat from that cast iron constantly just baking those chips. It'll probably last longer too. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, because the one I saw was in Lowe's, and it was cast mm-hmm. iron. And I was yeah. Just, yeah okay so that's okay that's good to know yeah get that it's probably on sale right now since it's um not you know the big box barbecue season as they call it yeah and we'll see sometimes you, you think so that you go there like hey, we know we know y'all hey we know y'all out there tailgating uh, <laughs> I mean hey look on Amazon if I have one for cheap you know never yeah. know. You might have the same one for like ten dollars cheaper. I don't know. True. <laughs> so, what are you guys' plans for Thanksgiving this year? Uh, what, what are you gonna do? Um, what What do you plan to cook, uh, Jeffrey? You go first. <clears throat> um, that kind of depends on what what the uh, what the plans are for getting together with folks or whatnot. But I mean, I I can tell you a few staples. I'm, I'm Probably gonna do another turkey and maybe a um, uh, definitely definitely some ham and mm. some seafood uh, seafood um, mac and cheese. Oh yeah, mm. and we'll be naps. And so, we'll be naps taken. <laughs> yeah, and I one of one of my favorites, man, is a is a is a cranberry sausage stuffing that I've uh, picked up a recipe on a couple of years ago, man. That you know mm. you do in a cast iron pan and it comes out. Perfect every time. I'm I'm a big stuffing stuffing fan. So oh yeah, yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what about but, you, Terrence? What are you going to do? Um. Well, we're having Thanksgiving at um my wife's aunt house, and I'm supposed to be doing the macaroni and cheese. Mm-hmm. Um. Which is kind of different because my well backstory my um my family we used to have thanksgiving dinner like every year and with this this is my um my mother's uh siblings and that's something that my grandparents started like before i was born and so um we end up switching it somewhere a couple of years ago man my, more than a couple of years ago i think about 20 years ago over or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's more than a couple. Yeah, I just <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yeah. We started having it Wednesdays because my uncle wasn't able to come on Thanksgiving because um, it was like always like a conference or something going on. So we started doing it on Wednesdays. Last year was the first time that we didn't do it because of COVID and it looks like we're not doing that again this year. Um yeah, well, kind of. I guess. Well, my uncle, he when everything first started, um, he had COVID like really bad. Like he was in the hospital for like a month, Damn. and most of that time he was in ICU. So Damn. when Thanksgiving rolled around last year, he was like, "Hey, y'all stay at y'all house. Um, I'll stay at mine." And then this year, everybody, I mean, we really weren't talking about it. So I guess everybody was just like, yeah, it's still kind of, you know, whatever. So we'll just wait because my mother is one of nine. And so I have like a bunch of cousins and stuff. It's like whenever Whoa, we have nine the, kids. Yeah. yeah. And you so got a big family. Good and Lord. they, Yeah. And most of them have kids and then their kids have kids. So when we get together, it's it's like a bunch of people in the house. So that's why everybody was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's still kind of weird now that because I so for years I've been having two Thanksgivings. Oh yeah. Wednesday and Thursday. And so this year my mom was like she really didn't have any plans or whatever. So um, oh yeah, that's another thing. Usually on Thanksgiving I would have two dinners. But now I'll just be yeah, having how much one. weight do you gain on, on <laughs> this week? <laughs> hey. <laughs> The ho- hey, hey, man! The holidays is is I, I let loose. Yeah, you got your pants. <laughs> your pants. I let loose. Gotta unhem your pants and shit. <laughs> yeah, but this year we're gonna have it at um my wife's aunt house. Um, 
would be the first time we have it there. Usually we have it at our grandmother's house, but if you remember our grandmother passed away earlier this year. Yeah. Um, so that's what we'd be doing. And I want to do something, you know, just me and her kind of um, got some turkey wings that we bought last week. Mm. So I was thinking about smoking those. Um, yeah, man. See how that goes. But that's pretty much it. Just um, I'm doing the macaroni. She's doing the uh, banana pudding. Oh. And mm. so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Um, one more meal? Well, no. And another <laughs> thing with my um, well, with my family tradition with the Wednesday. I used to be the one to do the turkey. And so I would always do mine in the oven. Like I've never done it any other way. Um, I wanted to fry it, but I've never, you know, gotten around to doing it and asking anybody if they wanted it. But um, how I was entrusted with that was one year, my aunt, before she passed, she wasn't able to make it. She said, she was like, Hey, um, you know, could you do the turkey or whatever? And I'm just like, you know, like we were talking about earlier, I was just, I was kind of nervous. I was, was like, man, because I know some people who made some dry turkey. And I'm just like, yeah, I, this is a lot of, you know, I'm like, I know how to cook, but I've never done a turkey. And I just, you know, thought about like Jeff said, I'm like, this is just like, you know, doing doing the chicken, doing the bird. Yeah, big ass chicken. Yeah. And so <laughs> I found the recipe and um, I usually cover my turkey when I do it in the oven. Mm-hmm. For about an hour, hour and a half, and then I uncover it for the rest of the time. Right, and so that's how my um, turkey stays moist. And then I do like a butter compound with like herbs and stuff, and I rub it all over. You know, before I cook it, I rub it all over and I get it under the skin and everything. I've never brined yeah. the turkey before. I've wanted to just to see what it's about, but but like with the method and putting it in the oven and stuff, I've never had a reason to. Yeah, it it adds like a another layer of flavor, especially to the breast because you know the breast takes some work. <laughs> yeah, that's why you got to get under that skin. Yeah, you got to get under that skin. Um, I used to inject, but the last two years that I did one, I didn't. Um, I broke my injector and I never got another one. So, <laughs> Walmart sells a, a really good one. Expert Grills they they um they they sell a really good one. I got a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah, you should check that out. It's a really good one. Uh, I have to keep it in a case so nobody loses like one of the needles. Cause I mean, it's a really big needle, really well built. But somebody lost my um, Insta read thermometer one time, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm hiding my shit for now." On. <laughs> 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 uh, do any of you guys watch any sports on Thanksgiving? Like, um, I, what is it? Does Dallas and Detroit still play every Thanksgiving? I know they have more than one game on now, but you guys watch any sports? Depends on on how much I'm cooking, <clears throat> but um, yeah, yeah, I usually watch the the later game. You know, you later a, football game. You have a favorite football team? I asked you in the pre-show uh, or early before the pre-show. Um, I just made sure you weren't a Falcons fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, def- definitely not a Falcons fan. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an old school uh, Tennessee Titans fan. Oh, okay, uh, okay. I just you know, I'm, I'm old school back from uh, uh Steve Oilers. McNair and Eddie, Eddie George. You know, so, okay. You know, I was just, oh, okay. I was just a duo back in the day, and I just kind of been yeah, following that's right. since then. Yeah, they were doing good until um, um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the injury. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll 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 see what happens, and we'll see if uh, we'll see if we can make it work. Yeah. How about your Eagles, Terrence? You um, do something. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking like it, man. Got a win on Sunday. Um, I think they figured it out. We'll see. Um. <laughs> You, you know, it's always confident. touch and go. It's always touch and go at the beginning of the season. Like you never know. It's just like it's it's up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm. I feel like um feel like they got it together. Uh playing the Saints Sunday at one. Uh, I think I think y'all got it. So that should yeah. 
that should be another another W, hopefully, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Everybody knows I'm a Patriots fan. Mac Jones is doing his thing. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. You never know. I don't know. You know, I got two teams because you know I'm a I'm a real big Tom Brady fan. Uh, oh lost yeah. Two in a row. It was kind of tough. It was kind of tough, but you know, just one of them things. So I got a question for both of you, and this is about Thanksgiving and how it ranks in your favorite holidays. Where where would you put Thanksgiving? And I I mean there ain't but so many, yeah. Right? So we'll do a top three. You know. Where does Thanksgiving rank in your top three? Terrence, you go first. Uh, probably second. And what's first? I think I think I know Christmas is probably yeah, first, right? Christmas, yeah. hands down. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? Oh, for me, Thanksgiving is first, man. Oh, I wasn't Definitely expecting first. that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Christmas, you you know, I'm I'm not one that you know, I'm I'm one of these folks. If it's something that I want, I'll typically go get it myself. So I'm never really the guy to tell somebody what I really want. So right, and it's and it's not and it's not their fault. You know, so sometimes I'll end up with a mixed bag at Christmas, but I know I'm gonna get some good food at Thanksgiving every <laughs> year. <laughs> you know, you got a point because I, I think it's a guy thing that we. This is the time that we treat ourselves. You know, yeah. we we don't. I don't know. Is it? Is it a thing that we don't like to receive gifts because we're supposed to be providers? Is that mm-hmm. is that? I think that's I think that's that's a that's a bit of it. You know, I think that's some of it. it and I, yeah, I, I agree with you on that point. But it, hey, Thanksgiving is where you can overkill. You can set up. Like, oh, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing a turkey. I'm doing ham. I'm doing brisket. Everything like more meat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or you yeah. like Terrence and have have two dinners. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh man, I thought you were going to say two dinners because you know you you split between your wife and you know the, I didn't know you just like for the hell of it just have two dinners. I mean, it, it usually you know like my my mom's and she would do something for us, and then like you know me going with my wife's family. That usually ended up being two on the same day, but like two Wednesday and then Thanksgiving. That just, just I don't know. <laughs> it's a little weird because I'm so used to, you know, having Thanksgiving dinner Wednesday and turn around and having Thanksgiving dinner the next day. Um, we the last two years we've been getting a smoked turkey, but we won't be getting one this year. Hmm. Um, so, 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 which is usually better, Wednesday or Thursday, taste wise? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, well, tread lightly. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not going to tread lightly at all. Okay, so the years that we cooked, somebody brought a dish. The food was always great on Wednesday. Um, it was one, two times somebody wanted to do a caterer. I don't know why. <laughs> and the food was less clean up. Like the last time the food wasn't good at all. Like the yeah. best stuff was the stuff that somebody actually made. Hmm. And I'm just like, did, do y'all know this person who was a caterer? Or y'all just found? <laughs> it was like, like, why would you risk that? Why would you risk that? <laughs> you know, an important this is Thanksgiving dinner. This is not it's like they're trying hey, to support black business. Right. Yeah, it's not like, hey, come to the house. You know, we we cook a dinner. This is like a special occasion. And I, I yeah, that I was I was very upset. I was just like, <laughs> what? You sound like you're still mad. Yeah, because I was I'm thinking about it. I'm just like, whose idea was this to get this canned food? Man. And like when See? I brought the turkey in, everybody looked very excited. And then when I started looking around, I said, "I see why." <laughs> <laughs> See, that's when you get the official and the unofficial results. Where everybody's like, "Yeah, it's good," and then everybody starts going off in the corners. And then, nah, man, I don't know what's up with this. <laughs> Not me. I, I made it known right there. <laughs> I was like, "Who?" I was like, "Where did this food come from?" <laughs> but grandma don't care. Grandma just tastes this. Tastes this, this is bad. Baby, this thing got no salt. <laughs> Terrible. I was, yeah, that was. 
Hmm. That was highly, highly upset, man. Oh man, that yeah, that's messed up, dude. Do they still <laughs> do they still like cater for, for cases like that? Do you know? I I don't know, and I'm still trying to figure out who the people was. And then the the time before that, the food wasn't good either. But they left it. I think we talked about this before. Those little um, what do you call the things where you the little trays where you have the uh. The little uh, warmers under them, uh, the sternos. Yeah, the sternos. they had them. They had them. Had to be sitting there too long. <laughs> they, be- they kept cooking because the food was tasting like. And I was just like, "Hey, man!" <laughs> oh, it tasted like the sterno. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Wow. Because I'm like, did somebody get? Did they have a water pan under it or something? <laughs> they forget that. They forgot that water pan. That's what it is. <laughs> but the Amateur. people, I, I think the people set it up. And I'm just like, I don't the whole experience was, was bad, man. Oh, oh man. oh man. It was yeah. <laughs> you gotta have the water pan. Yeah. Now one year we had some catered food, and I think that was the problem. Like the first year it was done, it was done with success. Oh, like, but it was it was from one of those restaurants, soul food restaurants where the food was known to be good. And so we didn't have any problems there. Oh, okay. Um, but the place closed, went out of business, mm. and so they just. And then I think that last year, yeah, the, the last year, they waited last minute to find somebody. That's never a good idea. No, no. <laughs> no you got to try this stuff out first. Yeah. So if the caterer, whoever you are, if you're listening and you recognize my voice or you know my family, I'm sorry. He's not sorry. He's just being nice. He's not sorry. No, what I'm sorry is about is me talking about it. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry about what I'm saying. I'm just, sorry you had to hear it this way. Use that as constructive criticism to do better. Yes. That and that was a couple sucks. of years ago. I hope it's I hope it's better by now. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the pandemic the people was like, hey, screw that. We'll cook ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Just stick with what know. you know. I mean, it's yeah. like Jeff said earlier. I mean, we've been doing this for years. Somebody bring a dish. Everybody knows everybody's strength and everybody's weakness. We know who not to let make the turkey. We know who not. <laughs> yeah. let, you know, we we know right. this stuff. We know who not to let make the macaroni and different stuff oh, like man. that. Mm. So, mm. and I like you said earlier. I guess is you know the cleanup and having to prep and all the other different things. But come on, man, this is. For my family and our size, that is the only time of year that all of us actually get to see each other and get together. Right. So it's not like you doing this every day or every week or every month. It's one time a year. Yeah. And I got to make the turkey. That's the, I mean, at one point I was making two turkeys. Damn. Yeah. Look at you. (laughs) And and they slipping on their job. They have one job. They have one job. That is, so, and that's their job. That's their response. You paid the money to yeah. do that. It so when we bring when we bring this thing back around next year. I, I, matter of fact, I'm glad we're having this conversation. I'm gonna say, hey, <laughs> everybody need to make a dish again. Thank you. <laughs> no catering, <laughs> right? <laughs> or there won't be any turkey. <laughs> I mean, if you do get the turkey from somewhere, I mean, I, honey baked ham got some bomb turkey. I ain't gonna lie, but yeah. don't get from nowhere else. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they, I mean, it's like a candy little, like, crust on the thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. Oh, man. Hey, until, until you got to wait in that line for Honey Baked Ham. Oh, yeah. Me. Yeah, been there. Yeah. Mm. Hey, and the turkey, uh, especially this year, because, you know, supply chain, <laughs> you might be oh, yeah. you might be hitting $100 for that turkey. Okay. Yeah. Is Charge it just me? Day. But it's like every year they say there's a shortage of turkey. And it's going to be so expensive. But every time I go to the store, it's it's not, they're not really hitting you in the head. It depends on where you're at, I guess. Must be. Yeah. Because it's the last couple of years, I've always been here. It's a turkey shortage. Now, of course, it's not like it was a couple of years ago. It, I mean, it must have had a, a lot of turkeys because that one one year I had to do two turkeys. They were like 19 cents a pound or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Ooh. And I was like, what yeah. in the world? <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, some and stores then, had to yeah. buy one get one free. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wish I liked turkey like that. <laughs> hey, at this point, out. just go ahead. Yeah, at this point, if you see, go ahead and buy buy two and freeze one for uh for Christmas or New Pretty Year's. Much. You know. Yep. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I'll be short. I I rank uh Thanksgiving second in mine because uh, we usually spend Thanksgiving. You know, just us, maybe April sister comes over and we just have a little little dinner, meaning big dinner because we black. You know, little dinner is big dinner because we black. And then, um, you know, we part ways. And then big thing is Christmas. It's, it's when we miss Christmas one year because we was like, oh, we don't feel like traveling. And never again <laughs> shall we do that. <laughs> So yeah, I I love Turkey Day, I, even though I don't love turkey like that. But it it um it is number t- it is number two. Now what is number three? I don't know. Maybe like uh, I ain't gonna lie and say Juneteenth because you know I ain't never. It, 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 I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lie and say Juneteenth right there. Uh, probably Labor Day. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Don't know. But you know. <clears throat> this is one of them things um, that I can let I can let Thanksgiving just go and not really care about it. But I know it means a lot to other people. I remember like watching Soul Food, and I think that's what really touched a nerve with especially our cultures. Like we get together and we just you know do our thing in the kitchen, and that's what brings us together is food. So it means even though it doesn't mean a lot to me. It means a lot to a lot of people. I mean, I, you know, I like that. I like to have people enjoy their time together. And a lot of people don't get together at Christmas. It's like a reverse, you know? Yeah. Some families get more together at uh, Thanksgiving than Christmas. It's just our family just does the reverse of that. But it, w- it wasn't always like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, one of the things. So what is your favorite side dish or dessert? Like... If somebody f's up the turkey, like you know, the people that catered <laughs> that dinner, <laughs> what is your favorite side dish as a backup? Um, Jeff, you go first. <clears throat> well, it's it's pretty simple on the side dish the desserts. I'm I'm kind of tied between a couple, but the side dish definitely is stuffing. Um, mm. it doesn't have to be that uh, cranberry sausage one. I'm I'm just I just love stuffing, man. Yeah. Um, and as far as the dessert, um, I'm a big cheesecake fan. Ooh, stop! Yeah, stop. me too. Ooh, I'm man. A, I'm a yeah, cheesecake fan, man. But here, here lately, man. Um, I don't know if you've seen the video on it, but um, uh, that white chocolate bread pudding that Malcolm Reed made. Yeah, that, that mm-hmm. thing there. I've mm-hmm. made that. I don't know how many times over the past couple of years. I've never and seen everybody just send eats me. it up. Somebody oh, send me the link. Oh man, I'll send. Uh, I'll hey, send it to you, man. Hey, Malcolm, be showing off now. Yeah, he be making this stuff seem a little too easy, and people gonna have false hopes out there. <laughs> hey, let me tell you, man. That, look, he said. He said the hardest thing about uh about making his bread pudding is letting his bread soak in this uh whipping cream for thirty minutes, and that's mm-hmm. it. There that's the is. hardest part. Wow. The other stuff, you just mix it and then you just let it go, man. I mean, it, I'm uh, seriously, man. It's killer, man. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So, how about you, Terrence? Um, sides, probably. I don't know, man. Probably macaroni and cheese and potato salad. Hmm. Those, what, what, if they like side by side on the plate, you know, side by side. Side by side, hey, meat in between. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little gravy on a little bowl yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I don't know. Like I like the, the stuffing and 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 you know, it wasn't until like my adult years I started doing the whole cranberry thing, and I was like, wow, I, I was missing out. Like I didn't know, because <laughs> I mean, as a kid, I'm like, why is this? I don't want this. Why is this in? I just 
<laughs> I tried it as an adult, and I was like, why didn't I just try this as a kid? Like the cranberries, I'm like, this is really good together. <laughs> why didn't I try this as a kid? <laughs> uh isn't that and, um, isn't that what a, like a few things you're like? Yeah. Why, why did I hate this as a kid? Like, but I usually would try stuff, but it just it was weird to me the whole cranberry thing. But as it an adult, out of place. Yeah. You know? Cause even when I make um, stuffing, um, it's a recipe that my aunt showed me. Sometimes I would put some um, some craisins in there, and I was just like, I, I was missing out. <laughs> I was missing out. <laughs> and like for dessert, um, sweet potato pie. Oh man! Cause somebody's gonna have some sweet potato pie. Not pumpkin pie, it. people. Not no, pumpkin pie. Never. There is a difference. Sweet potato oh, yeah. pie. <laughs> and if there's some pecan pie, uh, I'm more of a pie person. Um, I only, my, I mean, I mess with cake, I guess, but like for my birthday, I always get a cheesecake. Mm. Um, mm. And of course, banana pudding, but we get, we have banana pudding all the time. So at Thanksgiving, um, I'm just looking for that, that sweet potato pie, man. Mm. Mm. So there, there's a few that I, I like. I didn't always like this first one, but my wife makes <laughs> my wife makes a mean a mean collard greens. I'm telling you. So it she makes it for sometimes for Thanksgiving and especially for Christmas. And it was at this point where I, I think I told you this before, Terrence, on the last part. Like this dude named Jeffrey Jones. If, Close friend of the family. This dude takes yeah. a plate full <laughs> of nothing but collard greens. I'm like, hey man, we're, we're half the pot gone. What happened? Then this dude kept he calls during the summer to make sure <laughs> that there's gonna be collard greens for the holidays. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Priorities, I'm telling you. <laughs> the other one, um, God rest her soul, my grandmother, she, I, I, I didn't know this wasn't, maybe I'm wrong, this wasn't a typical thing that black families would do, but um, um, string bean casserole. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. 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 I did, I, I was, I was, I was. I was hesitant to try it for many years. I've never but when I tried it. it, lost my mind. I lost my mind. And I would say for the dessert, uh, candy sweet potatoes, not even in a pie, just candy sweet potatoes with uh, the, the marshmallows on top. I don't know if you guys had that. Oh, I haven't had the marshmallows on top in a long now, now time. Now see, now see, I don't I, now see some people wouldn't classify that as a dessert. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. My my family wouldn't classify that as a dessert. That was just mm-hmm. something that went straight with the meal. Like a souffle or something. Oh no, I ate that. I, no. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't want the collard green juice to just run on. No, no. I mean, I get it, but I thought it was a dessert because it had the um uh, marshmallow marshmallows. On. Yeah, that's what did it for me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, this marshmallow don't match with this macaroni. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad did. My dad did the same thing you're talking about: marshmallows and raisins with it. You know, that's good, man. It was always we just always yeah. considered the side. Yeah. Wow. I didn't. I didn't. I I thought that was always a dessert. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. See, man, you cheat yourself out of one dessert now. Yeah. I could have had that cheesecake and just like <laughs> what a red velvet cake, you know? Yep. Red, oh, red velvet cheesecake is better. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. All right. So let's see. Lightning round is gonna be some random questions for y'all. So all right. Um I'm just gonna pick at random here. So White meat, dark meat, Jeffrey. Uh, depends on what we're talking about. If it's chicken, uh, dark meat. Um, 
turkey, white meat, because I know it's gonna be moist when I when I make it. When you make it, yes. <laughs> yeah. You gotta you gotta say that specifically when you make it. <laughs> it's not guaranteed from other people. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me see. Uh stuffing or dressing Terrence. Now what's the difference? I've always wondered that. Okay. So from this this is this is how I cl- classify the difference. Stuffing is more bread based. Uh-huh. And dressing is more cornbread based. Like a cornbread dressing. Ah, okay. So that's how that's how I separate it. Got it. Definitely stuffing. Definitely okay. stuffing, yeah. All right. Um let's see. Uh, um hmm. Uh let's see. Um potato salad. And it's southern potato salad now. Southern potato salad. Southern potato salad. Not not the other stuff. Um not the Russian potato salad. Not that not that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or macaroni salad, Jeff. <clears throat> okay, so let's Let's uh, g- give me your give me your definition of southern. Southern would be okay. What what okay. color are we talking? It's 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 yellow. It's yellow. It definitely has okay. mustard in it. Okay. If if I was going that route, I'd say I'd say um, macaroni salad. If you're talking white potato salad, I'll take that first. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Um, hmm. <laughs> I gotta think about this now. Um, this is this is gonna be a dessert one. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. So I know you like sweet potato pie, but you had a choice between sweet potato pie and any cheesecake, Terrence. Which one would you choose? Oh. Kind of question is this? <laughs> <laughs> Conundrum. <laughs> hmm. I still say sweet potato pie because uh-huh. it's it's harder to come by a good sweet potato pie, and that's not something that you could pretty much get year round. Mm-hmm. But cheesecake, you can. All right. Let me see here. One more thing. One more thing. <clears throat> and and I'll just throw this out there because we, we mentioned both of these proteins before. And I direct it to both of you. At the end of the day, if you could have only one, only one, which would you pick? Ham or turkey? Anybody turkey. can go. Turkey. turkey? Yeah, turkey. I was not expecting that, but I, okay, I expected from Terrence because he doesn't eat pork, so that that wasn't fair. I, I should I should probably I should probably you know, <laughs> now back when I did, it would have been ham. I went for the ham every time. Okay, like being it was because I was expecting the turkey to be dry, and so I would go for the ham. Okay. Makes sense. I'm gonna get you back on pork one day. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's like you trying to get me to shoot these videos. <laughs> it's two different things, man. Hey, look, it's the same to me. <laughs> you shoot those videos, you'd be fine. I don't you need that pork, you'd be fine. Yeah, okay. I'll just, I'll just mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine to my stomach, be like, hey, hey, what's this? Yeah, you ain't eat it in a while. Yeah, it will yeah. be. It will be something. I don't know. I don't. I, I, I still, still kind of see them saying to me because you know I might, I still might have that camera too close to the grill and might overheat. Now that's your fault. <laughs> after, we, we, after we already discovered that was the problem first. <laughs> you, you want oh, that man. camera to be ruined? <laughs> it's my phone too. That's the bad part. Shoot. <laughs> oh man. All right, so we come to the end of the show. I hope everyone had uh, was entertained and, and educated and prepared for their turkey day. So 
you guys are content creators so what is coming up next for you guys uh jeff you go first what what's next for you uh through the end of the year just in case we don't pod again in 2021 what's up next for you uh gotta definitely getting a double smoked ham cook uh uh, hopefully have that up by this Saturday and got a really good cook on some, on some ribs, but I'm going to be changing focus over to some uh, sheet pan meals Okay. to kind of give, kind of give folks that, you know, that quick, easy during the week uh, thing. So, and it's good. It's good to have some vegetables, everything on one tray and you can get it all done, you know, within, within 30, 45 minutes. So, hmm. It's pretty dope. I can't yeah. wait for that. Can't wait for that. Now, go ahead and tell people where to find you um, and all the, you know, the stuff that you're putting out, you know, the YouTube and we, we got to get more people on your Facebook, too. So so tell them where to find you on Facebook, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, uh, Outdoors with Jeff on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram and TikTok and Twitter as well. I didn't know you were on TikTok. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm on TikTok. Hey, I might have to, might have to sign up for TikTok. Oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> rabbit hole city. <laughs> 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 you know, I have this fear of getting on TikTok because I know it's like crack. <laughs> Not that I know what crack is like, but <laughs> could imagine the effect. You know. It, it, it might not. The thing about it is, I don't. I have a TikTok, and I I never get on until someone sends me a video to watch, and then I I close it out. So You're a responsible a adult, though. I, give I, a I, shot. But I'm, I'm not, not like that on Instagram. So I guess it just just depends. Yeah, true. And I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so hey. Terrence, you are up next. What is up with you? You you got some um. Got some blog posts coming. You got a uh, new podcast coming out, uh, episode coming out. Tell people where to find you on the. I know you said it at the beginning of the episode, but just in case you forgot. Yeah. Um, the Brown Sugar Cafe dot blog. That's my uh, my website, my blog page. Um, my podcast is the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook, the Brown Sugar Cafe. Um, and got a blog post coming out. I should be done by the end of the week. Um, and like I said earlier, I try to base my podcast episode off of that, uh, blog post. It's kind of like a continuation. Like, you know, you read the blog post and okay, all right, let's talk about, you know, what you read, that sort of thing. And so I'm trying to have both of those done um, by the weekend, at least out by the beginning of next week. Um, And that's what I got. I'm still working on that third book, trying to get that done before the end of the year. Um, So, yeah, that's what I got going on. You guys are doing dope stuff. Give a hand clap again. I love that. Doing great content, putting a lot of work into it. Great quality stuff. Um. You know, we Jeff, you you're doing great on YouTube, and I, I like to look at the the comments. You know, they always say, "Don't look at the comments, don't look at the comments." But you you have very positive comments on yours, and Terrence, you are in the top 100. You know, listen episodes on Good Pods. That that you know, that's that's great. Everybody's doing great things. I hope you guys keep it up. Hope you guys come back to the pod and talk. And I hope everyone that listens to the show follows both of you and consumes the great content. So I'm going to say this um, this this heartfelt thing, this, this, this real heartfelt thing. I feel a tear coming. Um, everyone out there, you all know, be safe. Y'all get yourself a temperature probe. Cause they don't nobody want no raw turkey. Cause you decided that you want to defrost it that morning. Don't don't kill nobody. Please don't kill nobody with no salmon. No. <laughs> you said that they love you and you love them. Why would you subject them to such things as that? And don't put the stuffing inside the turkey when you just 
I mean, was it like a day before? You gonna have everybody sick, and they don't think they had COVID. They're like, I got my vaccine. You see, you you just spilling out of both ends. <laughs> that ain't COVID. <laughs> They're trying to kill you. Don't go back to the other relative's house no more. Hey, and and per Terrence, you might want to try out the caterer's stuff before you you assign them to cook the big meal for all the family. Because nobody, nobody's gonna come back to your house after that. <laughs> you are not trusted anymore. Anymore. But on a serious note, on a serious note, I'm just joking. But on a serious note, no, that, that was serious. But on a serious note, everybody be safe out there. Um, I, I have a fellow content creator that always says, you know, it's around the holidays. Make sure that you reach out to people that, uh, you know, they we all going through something. You know, just make sure you say hi. Speak to them. Reach out because people are going through some stuff. It's still pandemic. Around the holidays, it's hard for people. It's really hard for people to get through. Make sure that you are the one that puts joy in their life, and you could be the difference between life and suicide. Serious, serious out there. Stay masked up. And if you go, if you go out there in the woods somewhere, make sure, make sure that you 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 put the your your, your pants. Um, and your boots right so you don't have a snake in your boot and you don't you don't get that snake bite and you don't die because you don't you know you don't want to be a statistic like that but until next time everybody be blessed everybody be blessed less stressed have fun around that barbecue because if there's smoke if I, i'm not still in there doing stuff but if there's smoke make sure that you have a water hose around there or a fire extinguisher because please don't burn down your house much love everybody be blessed. Happy holidays.